Hello, everybody. Welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well. And that you're all having a fantastic day as always. Leaving a like, leaving a comment, or subscribing. It helps out the channel immensely. Yeah, actually that much. And without further ado... Let's jump right into it. On Friday, payments giant MasterCard announced at CES 2023 that via a partnership with blockchain startup Polygon or Matic, they will be launching a Web3 focused incubator to help artists. If you've been paying attention at any point over the course of the last year and some change, Polygon has grown quite exponentially and is kind of the, has become the uh, cryptocurrency layer two side chain solution scaling thingamajig uh, that everyone was waiting for for a while. And we have had an enormous amount of very large companies, even in the past three months, Facebook, uh, Disney and JP Morgan Chase who have also announced that they're going to be using Polygon as well. According to a report by TechCrunch, published earlier, Raja Rajamanar, Chief Marketing and Communications Officer at MasterCard, said, The core of this program is providing emerging artists with the Web3 tools and skills they need to excel and advance their music careers in this digital economy. By providing access to experts, and innovators in the space, the artists will be guided on how to incorporate Web3 into their work and throughout the entire program and then beyond. We see that Web3 holds tremendous promise for artists and creators to create, own, and monetize their content, but only if they know how to leverage it. This past year was big for us with experimental Web3 activations around the world. It says Polygon is a decentralized Ethereum scaling solution that enables developers to build scalable user-friendly dApps with low transaction fees without ever sacrificing security. Polygon is big, and I think it's only going to continue growing. I mentioned that in a couple of other videos here and also on Money Rules. Uh, it is abundantly clear that in the last two years, a larger corporation companies have been looking for a place to enter the cryptocurrency space especially as the uh, newest keyword appears to be Web3, the next iteration of the internet. And since uh, they've all kind of decided, if you will, on what the next one is going to be, they're now all using Polygon. I always mention, follow the money. Here's the original uh, TechCrunch uh, article. Yeah, always follow the money. You know, one, one company is like, oh, that's kind of cool. Three companies is like, oh, okay, excuse me. But when you have like seven over the course of a couple of months and they plan on using it for really big things, uh, that to me, at least for me, not financial, um, what do you call it? Financial information or, you know, whatever. Uh, these are usually the things that I end up focusing on and investing into the most because, you know, logic. That's the MasterCard is launching a Web3 focused artist incubator with Polygon. Is anyone surprised? No, it's Polygon. All right, let's move on. Also in news, the highly constantly spoken about anticipated launch of the Shibarium solution, is that what they're calling it? Okay, is apparently just around the corner. And Shiba Inu community members are buzzing with excitement as they wait for the launch. Shibarium, as par as far as par, as far as I understand it, is meant to be the layer two scaling solution for uh, Shiba Inu. It's been in the news for at least a good, I mean, a year, if not more. But the last six months, there were a lot of really weird things on Twitter with the community members being like, "Hey guys, get ready," and then nothing actually ended up happening. So apparently now it's right around the corner. Developers recently made an announcement regarding rumors about other tokens being allegedly required in order to utilize the new network. 
Bone is, apparently, the coin is called Bone, B-O-N-E, is and will remain the only token required for gas fees and use when it comes to Shibarium. Uh, the reason why this is news, for those of you who were not here before or keep missing every time we have Shiba Inu news, is that, as what I can remember, is the Shiba Inu team, or rather within their ecosystem, there are multiple coins. There's Shiba Inu, there's Bone, there's Leash, there's Treat, as in like a dog treat, and I think there's also a fifth one, and then there's a stable coin. Right. So everyone was like, well, which one of these coins will be the coin for the platform? Apparently it's Bone. The team reiterated that the Layer 2 solution belongs to the Shiba community, emphasizing its solid foundation to innovate while fostering the Shiba Inu ecosystem. Developers say that users should keep tabs on official announcements and avoid misinformation from outside parties. Uh, the coin has rallied bone, has rallied by more than 10% over the past week. Very fascinating. It's either, I mean, it's been like a 90-10 split. The 90% is normally a massive amount of uh, Shiba Inu coin burn news. We get it all the time. You've seen it in other videos. I think they're trying, as far as I understand, I think they're trying to burn trillions of coins or something like that. And the idea is once they get back to a couple billion uh, that one cent per Shiba Inu should kind of be it. And this is why a lot of times we do get uh, Shiba Inu whale news, not financial advice, of a lot of people who are buying massive amounts of Shiba Inu in, I guess, future anticipation of what the coin could be. Because once again, look at Dogecoin. There was no, there were zero indications that the coin was ever going to go above one cent. And now we're talking about a dollar uh, Dogecoin. That's the Shiba Inu news. Here's the tweet for it right here. From Shibarium's network or Shibarium, I don't really know. Does it really matter? Nope, it's just a coin. Alrighty. Let's move on. Also in the news, I don't know what this is even supposed to be. South Korean tech giant LG Electronics has announced that it has teamed up with cloud-based technology platform Orbit, that is O-O-R-B-I-T, and Pixel... I don't know, what, what, what is this? Pixel, and then Y-N-X. Pixel... A company building an integrated music, gaming, and Web3 ecosystem to bring the metaverse directly into the living room of its viewers. Hang on with me here, because I have some comments. Here's a tweet right here. It says, announced just in time for CES 2023. We're excited to announce that we have partnered with LG Electronics to bring interoperable gaming and social experiences directly to your LG smart TVs. If you're wondering why this is crypto news, on the fringe of crypto society, uh, we tend to get tons of banking, financial, and technology news that may or may not be speculatively using or incorporating uh, NFTs, metaverses, or blockchain technology. So this is one of those instances where it's a giant company who is just simply integrating Web3 and trying to integrate metaverses, metaverse size, into their... Uh, televisions. The collaboration is set to allow viewers to explore intercontinent, inter, almost said intercontinental, interconnected virtual worlds, concerts, and artificial intelligence multiplayer games through their TVs, making it easier for consumers to interact in the metaverse. <clears throat> Hear me out here. This is going to sound completely insane. This isn't even a joke. Isn't that just TV? The idea of interconnected virtual worlds just sounds like you're playing a game on the PlayStation that has like warp fields or something like that. Or or even the idea of like the virtual world simply being like a video or something on YouTube. I can already watch concerts on a TV or on the computer. And artificial intelligence multiplayer games, uh, that sounds like a lot of games. And, I, and I'm, I'm not being cynical. It's more like a, have you ever played like Mario Kart? You know, like, the other cars that aren't you are also running on AI 
so that it is technically an AI multiplayer game. I don't know. This sounds like a little bit weird, but I, I think if you watch the other video, we're in this really weird space right now where tons of companies are trying to not be cool and hip per se, but there's a lot of like, hey, look at what we can do because, you know, we're also getting into crypto and Web3 is like this new uh, buzzword that everyone is also trying to jump on. According to a 4th of January press release, users will be able to access super high fidelity interconnected virtual worlds and experiences including virtual concerts and AI generative multiplayer games. This is what they said. Puya Kusha, the co-founder and chief technology officer of Orbit, said our proprietary technology is the connective tissue that links virtual worlds together and makes it easy for developers and brands to bring their experiences into the metaverse. Scaling our technology for millions of LG TV consumers is the next step in making the metaverse accessible for all. So cool, but this feels a little weird. Is anyone else in the same boat as I am or is it really just me? I feel like the idea... So for me, the metaverse has always been like a headset. Or like augmented reality, like that's the metaverse around us. Me sitting on a couch and looking at my TV at something that looks like a video game and isn't immersive doesn't doesn't really sound exceptionally fun to me. But we've also seen tons of other companies doing the exact same thing. So whenever all these things do launch, we will explicitly see how popular and or unpopular these things are i think more people will be opting for an immersive headset as opposed to like oh snap my tv has stuff on it like it did before a couple days ago that's the lg is working on integrating web 3 and metaverse size onto their televisions yeah let's move on in this was really popular i don't know they had a physical space that's kind of weird Okay, in really popular news, curated non-fungible token marketplace Super Rare has apparently reduced their staff by 30%. CEO John Crane announced on Friday, succumbing to the woes of the extended crypto winter that has chilled... Men That's very dramatic. The <laughs> succumbing to the woes of the crypto winter that have chilled many crypto sectors. So... For those of you who don't know, and I'm sure it's a large portion of people, there were a lot of cryptocurrency, no, 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 a lot of NFT platforms that ended up launching around 2020 or so. Super Rare was one of them. I remember trying to sign up for it and then finding out that I can't because Super Rare only allowed people who were like actual big, gigantic, you know, you have 700,000 followers on your Twitter page. And I mentioned many, many moons ago, Oh, I don't think that's going to go too well for them. Why not? Because you are excluding about 99% of the population who's also trying to sell stuff as well. So this is why you hear quite often that OpenSea is and probably will remain the largest NFT platform for a while. C can anyone tell? Can you anyone? Right, because they allowed everyone on their platform. Like I think Super Rare at one point had like 18 people who were able to sell and it was like, okay. So the news is, is that they uh, had to let go one third of their staff. I can't imagine why when no one was probably using their platform. In a statement posted on Twitter, Crane said that the company saw rapid growth when the NFT market was formally booming and it overhired to compensate. Okay, here's a tweet right here. That's a lot of words, but just know there's a, like, a, like a, a wall of words in that tweet. During the recent bull run, he said, we grew in tandem with the market. In recent months, it's become clear that this aggressive growth was unsustainable. We overhired, and I take full ownership of this mistake, end quote. Crane said cutting its staff helped to right-size the company and ensure that Super Rare can continue to service the artists and collector communities. I'm pretty sure this is just because no one's using their platform. I don't know what their daily volumes or metric are. You know, I, this is not being mean, but I mentioned all of this before. There were multiple other platforms. Like, remember the platform Nifty? Yeah, see, you forgot about that one. It was literally called N-I-F-T-Y. I think it's from the Gemini twins. 
because they were trying to make a cute way of saying the letters NFT. So they thought that saying nifty would catch on as opposed to people saying the letters and they created a platform that was also very exclusive. The same exact thing. Don't forget Binance also had an NFT platform. It still does. They still have an NFT platform, but no one is using it and no one used it because for the first like five months, it was also very exclusive. So I don't know. A lot of people who continue to make things in the cryptocurrency space, I think they have this really weird idea that there are hundreds and thousands of crypto millionaires like foaming at the mouth waiting for these exclusive platforms. The idea of uh, anything exclusive in crypto also should not be. The idea of decentralization is that we are all part of the same tribe, the same group. We're all in crypto. The moment you make something, and, 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 and I don't mean edition size, you know, like this is, this is a one of one. I mean like, no, I'm sorry, you 99% can't come inside here because you're not as big as everyone else. That's the old financial system. So I'm not surprised that these other platforms uh, aren't taking off. And when I said this was popular news, yeah, for some reason, uh, any type of people getting fired news really does it for the cryptocurrency space. Super rare cuts 30% of staff as growth slows during crypto. I'm sure it's not because of crypto winter. And there's a really dramatic photo of a guy being like, oh gosh. And there's a the, the word super rare in the photo with an emoji or a stick figure walking out of a door that says 30%. Whoever made that, you're a genius. I saw it and I laughed for a while because, you know, that's that's a photo. NFT marketplace, super rare lays off staff after overhiring. So We'll see if after the next bull run, if companies get it right, but they never do. They never, you know. That's the super rare news. Wow. Let's move on. Oh boy, here we go again. Decentralized exchange. Yep, you heard that correctly. Decentralized exchange balancer, called balancer, has issued a warning to its liquidity providers instructing them to remove their funds from five pools containing around $6.3 million, what seems to be a component of a broader potential exploit or a technical flaw. Balancer has been prescribing ways to eliminate it. On the 6th of January, Balancer took to Twitter in order to make an announcement regarding an issue with the, pat with the platform's money, basically. In order to alleviate the problem, the DeFi application stated that the protocol fees have been set to zero and that additional information will be publicly provided in the near future. However, the team also emphasized the fact that this particular strategy would not be effective in mitigating all of the implications of the mystery problem. And here's the tweet right here. I'm sure you can tell by the exhaustion in my voice because remember last year when I was like, oh, oh, there's going to be a lot of other DeFi platforms who will also be experiencing problems. And I mentioned it, and I'll mention it again. Uh, if you find yourself in a situation where all of your crypto's money uh, is on one platform, I would definitely suggest... Uh, you not only get a couple of ledgers, uh, but also start separating your money so that it's not all on the same platform. I've noticed an uptick in the amount of angry people on Twitter and on the interwebs uh, who are complaining that they lost their money, all of it, because it was on one crypto exchange. So once again, uh, the same, you know, the saying, uh, don't have all your eggs in one basket uh, you know, it's it's a saying for a reason. Don't have all of your money on one or even, you know, spread it out across five different places. So that should something like this happen again in another way, uh, you won't have a problem because a lot of people seem to keep forgetting that I'm telling them, you know, real world stuff that's going to save them a lot of money. But alas, that's the De DeFi ex exchange balancer. Apparently is having liquidity provided provider problems. So, you know, if it hits the fan, we'll be hearing more about them in the next couple of days because that's just how the news usually works. All right. Let's move on. 
Also in the news, tokens prices spike by apparently 73% in the first 30 days of them being listed on Binance. An analytics crypto investor, Ren and Heinrich, has found the report, which tracked 26 coins over a year and a half, showed a 41 per- Jeez. Showed a 41% increase a day after the coin was listed on the world's largest crypto exchange by market volume and a 24% gain on day three. Fantastic. Ren and Heinrich's findings offer evidence of a Binance effect. Whoa. That benefits tokens at least for the short term and resembles a similar Coinbase effect. A term first conceived. What? Whoever wrote this, you're not, you, you have not been in crypto for that long. It says the Coinbase effect term was first conceived in 2021. No, 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 no. This, this goes way back to 2017, my friends. Coinbase in 2016 and 15 was the go-to spot for your cryptocurrency needs. By the time we got to 2017... Everyone and their grandmother was basically using Bi- uh, Coinbase to get their... I was looking at the word Binance. Going to Coinbase to get their coins. Every single coin that Coinbase said they were going to list or launch or have on their platform would skyrocket. I mean, a good two or 300% in a day or two. It looked insane. Everyone wanted their coin to be on Coinbase because it was then the largest cryptocurrency exchange. This is why at the end of the year, the Coinbase effect was in full effect when we had rumors that Coinbase was going to be listing XRP. That was the, you know, XRP literally had that rumor in summertime, started the year less than one cent, went to one cent, went to 10 cents, went to a dollar, And then ended up hitting $3 and something cents. That was the coin base effect. This was not first conceived in 2021. Whoever wrote this article. A study in April of 2021 by crypto analytics firm Masari found that token listings on Coinbase led to a 91% jump in price in the first five days of trading. This week's study suggest that Binance's emergence as the dominant, I mean, there's no contesting it, global crypto exchange might mean that its individual token listings are now getting a lot more attention, at least amongst speculators. I don't think, there aren't many coins I think that have to like be listed left on any cryptocurrency exchanges. Like the only one that comes to mind like immediately is Omi. But after that, I think every other coin is basically kind of, you know, on an exchange already. Still kind of crazy for those of you who've been missing the last couple of videos and haven't really paid attention to exactly how large Binance is. Uh, spoiler, it's huge. It's 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 mathematically ridiculously large. So yeah, we now apparently have a Binance effect, which is, I think we could have all seen that coming with just how large that they are now. So just logic. That's the Binance listing analytics, news, coins, 26 of them over 18 months, news, and yeah, let's move on. Also in the news, Morgan Stanley, one of the world's biggest investment banks, they have 6.5 trillion with a T dollars in assets under management has recently disclosed that they now hold Bitcoin. What? No way. Why would Morgan Stanley and every other bank in the world be doing that? That's crazy. It's almost like they're expecting something. The largest cryptocurrency by market cap on behalf of their fund customers. In a recent filing, the Morgan Stanley Europe Opportunity Fund revealed that it purchased $3.6 million worth of Grayscale's Bitcoin Trust. For those of you who missed it, Grayscale is a company who has tried, sadly, for the last six years or so to launch a Bitcoin ETF. They have a Grayscale Bitcoin fund, and in everything but the three letters, it is basically an ETF. But within the United States, the SEC has said NO to a 
BTC ETF. So people are going WTF. Okay, I'm, okay, I'm done with the letters. Anyway, the point is, um, we heard that Grayscale's fund apparently hasn't been faring too well uh, in that the price of Bitcoin on their fund has a 50% discount. So I would even gather that Morgan Stanley maybe purchased Bitcoin through the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust because it's on 50% discount. Maybe they're expecting it to go back up in price on Grayscale's fund, and therefore they'll have doubled their money. I don't know. The filing reads, the fund may... Consistent with its principal investment strategies, invest up to 25% of its total assets in a wholly owned subsidiary of the fund. The subsidiary may invest in Bitcoin indirectly through cash settled futures or indirectly through investments in Grayscale's Bitcoin Trust, GBTC, a privately offered investment vehicle that invests in Bitcoin. This fund, which mostly holds British, Italian, French, Swiss and Dutch equities aims to maximize capital appreciation by investing primarily in high quality established and emerging companies located in Europe that the investment team believes are undervalued at the time. Yeah, okay, there go okay, yeah, makes sense. It believes that the team that the team believes are undervalued at the time of purchase. It is literally 50% off. So I assume that's why they did it. So this is also very popular news. Um I think popular because it's so consistent with our current findings and there's tons of logic. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Uh, this was major news because it has to do with Morgan Stanley. Like, you know, there's no one, no one's actually paying attention to the fact that any of this good news keeps happening. And I, and, 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 and I use good news lightly. So not in caps. Every single letter is, is very tiny. Because once again, uh, we are seeing a gigantic monopoly of uh, Bitcoin whale holders amongst the wealthiest people on the planet, which I myself don't agree with because if all the Bitcoin's in the hands of, you know, 100 people, you know. So, cool. Uh, another gigantic bank has openly announced that they are into the cryptocurrency space. Uh, fantastic. I could have told you that before. I assume Morgan Stanley probably owns some Bitcoin or their subsidiary owns it or the subsidiary of the subsidiary somewhere on some island somewhere that you've never heard of probably already holds Bitcoin for them. That's the Morgan Stanley Bank holding BTC for their C-L-I-E-N-T-S clients. C-L-E-I-I-N clients. Let's move on. Why could I not spell clients? C-L-I-E-N-T-S. I'm pretty sure that's right. Also in the news, the world's largest cryptocurrency exchange, Binance, has received a limited objection from the US SEC for the planned $1 billion acquisition of bankrupt crypto lender Voyager Digital. The SEC disclosed the statement by declining the acquisition proposal due to a lack of adequate informazione. According to a bankruptcy court filing on the 4th of January, the SEC claimed that the acquisition agreement lacked information about the ability of Binance to finalize the deal. Also, the regulators requested more details about the viability of Binance US post-acquisitions business operations. Sharp drops in the value of cryptocurrencies and significant cash flow led Voyager Digital to file for Chapter 11 bankruptcy in the Southern District of New York on the 5th of July of last year. All of the corporate entities that belong to the crypto lender were included in the bankruptcy filing. Let me see if you get this part as I, as I read it, because I saw it and I was like, uh-huh. Voyager claimed... That on the 27th of September, 27th of September, that FTX had actually won the auction for their assets with an offer of $1.4 billion. That would have allowed consumers to recover 72% of their frozen crypto assets, but later no assets were transferred due to the FTX collapse. Following that, Binance reported that they submitted a bid to acquire Voyager Digital instead. Did you get it? No one got it? So Voyager collapses and Binance wants it, but FTX wins the bid for it. People go crazy on Twitter. 
FTX collapses. And over the last month and a half, we've only had news that Binance has been acquiring everything that FTX was trying to buy. Anybody? So cool. This is very popular news because it has the letters SEC inside of it. And the SEC is basically, I believe that, as I've been saying the last couple of weeks, uh, Binance is huge. This is going to continue to be news, and you don't understand the scope of how large Binance actually is. Uh, but they're now in the position that they can basically buy anything that they want. And in order to stop a monopoly, this is why I believe the SEC has stood in or stepped in for the actual acquisition. Because if Binance owns everything, you know. Anyway, and I and I really do wonder if people understand what I'm saying. Like, I think people hear and understand English so that you, you get what I am saying. But you don't understand what it means for an exchange to already be this powerful. You've seen before in other videos, the people from Binance go around the world and they're, they, they've partnered with countries and or are friends with the leaders of multiple countries on the planet. That's the Binance is trying to acquire Voyager Digital. The SEC has stepped in and said nay, at least for the moment, until they can prove something else from Binance. But, you know... Let's move on. Rightio. I do hope that you've all enjoyed. Hope the beginning of your week is going well. Hope it goes by quick. Last week went really, really fast. I, this is, some of these days, I'm not sure what's going on anymore. I think that there's like, you know, tons of time. I look up, it's the next week, and I already have like more stuff to do because I forgot to do the stuff that I wanted to do the week before. A little stressful. Little, uh, tiny, tiny smidge stressful with everything going on. I do hope that you've all enjoyed. I do hope that you all are having and have had a great day, morning, afternoon, and or evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, commenting, and or supporting. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.